on Author's Corner, R.M. Gray joins us. Her book, Night Weaver. Oh, I could talk to her all day long. She is a fan of a pirate girl who is super strong and super interesting. And this book pulls you in. So I'm happy she's with us here on America. Tonight with me, Kate Delaney. R.M. Gray, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So let's talk about that main character since I already teed it up and then we'll dive deeper into the book. Right. Perfect. Tell us about um, tell us about Violet. Yeah. So Violet is um, Violet was a really fun character to write. Um, I kind of her inspiration. Um, I obviously I loved the Pirates of the Caribbean movies growing up. Um, and I, I loved Elizabeth Swan. That was like my hero. Um, and I was always really interested in the character arc that Elizabeth Swan's character took throughout the series um, of Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, she went from being this, um, you know, governor's daughter to eventually, you know, like king of the pirates. Um, and so something in my, uh, you know, in my own writing that I, I really wanted to explore with, you know, my main character, Violet, was what would it look like to kind of do that arc in reverse um, and take this character who is this really strong, um, you know, fierce pirate heroine. And, um, you know, what would that look like if she was um, on land and, uh, you know, in a, in a new setting, like a manor setting? Um, so Violet is really stubborn she's super loyal to her family um she doesn't take no for an answer and she sticks up for herself and um she's a really fun character because she's brave but i always like to tell people she's brave not in a way that she's not scared like she's she's scared but she does things despite being scared and so that's something that i i really i loved writing and i i think is really interesting so how did this all come about how did this book come about um, Violet Oberon, the whole thing. How did it happen? Yeah. Um, well, it's kind of funny because I actually, I started writing Nightweaver as kind of a writing exercise. I had been working on another book at the time. Um, and I had gone through some edits on it and I just, I couldn't really get it to a place that I was really happy with at the time. And so I wrote the first chapter of Nightweaver as kind of a, just a writing exercise um, just uh, really the inspiration behind it was I wanted to see if I could write a story with a major character death in the first chapter, just to see if I could do that and and if I could make it impactful. Um, and so I wrote the first chapter of Nightweaver and I was just really intrigued by it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I kept working on it just kind of for myself. Um, but I just really ended up loving the story. I've always loved pirates. Really anything that I write usually involves pirates. Um so yeah, it was just it was fun to kind of explore that idea of this alternate world where I always tell people it's like you've got the Gilded Age, but it's combined with the Golden Age piracy. And there's a lot of fun fantasy elements um, that you don't typically see with pirate stories. Um, you know, you've got like unicorns and stuff like that. So I think that's a really fun thing to play with. So it's just been a really fun. It's been a fun adventure for me to go on. Yeah, and you know, you you talk about the beginning of the book. And you and I had an off-air conversation where you said, you know, this is also a book where this could help people with grief. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so the story really follows Violet, um, the main character, as she she's trying to solve her brother's murder. And and also she's experiencing this major change in her life, you know, this total upheaval of of everything she's ever known and and just kind of what that looks like you know, with her and even with her, cause she's, she's got quite a few siblings and, and how all of them sort of deal with that grief differently of losing their brother. And, and, you know, some of them, you know, everybody just deals with it in a different way. And so something that I've heard from a lot of people that have read the book, they've reached out to me to tell me, you know, Hey, this really, you know, helped me through, a, you know, a dark time in my life where I had just lost somebody. And, you know, I, I was, struggling to feel seen in the things that I was reading. And and this really, you know, made me feel seen and, you know, made, made me feel like, you know, I could relate to Violet's journey. Um, so that's been really, I mean, touching to me that, you know, I think I told you even when we spoke, you know, that that's really all an author could hope for, you know, that your book resonates with people like that. So, yeah. And you're not done really yet. You're working on the sequel, right? I am. Yes. Currently I'm working on the sequel. So Nightweaver is book one in a planned series of five. So I'm working on the sequel 
And that's been really fun. I'm getting close to finishing that. And so it's it's fun to see where that story is going. Did you ever think that you would sit down and have this? I mean, you you obviously enjoyed writing, but did you think you would just be out there in the world as an author and talking about this series and it would be five books and who knows where that goes? I mean, you know, that it it really is so surreal because I, I always have, like you said, I, I've always loved writing and it was always something that I told people, you know, like, oh, one day I'm going to be an author. Like one day I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this thing. But to really like be here in this moment, you know, even like talking to you, it's kind of like just something where like, if I could go back and tell my past self, I don't think I would believe myself. Um, Cause I'm, I'm finally, you know, I'm at that point where, you know, like you said, the, the book is out there in the world and I'm talking to people about it and, you know, talking about the series and everything. It's really freeing to get to talk to people about it because it's been this world that I've lived with for so long um, that I didn't ever really get to share with anybody. And now I'm actually getting to talk about it and share it. And so that's really fun and, and really cool to me. And when you're writing this, and I think anybody can read this book, but definitely, uh, you know, teens, young adults can certainly relate to, I think, so much of what you weave into your tales. Do you think about that as you're going through your process and refining it? So, I mean, you know, for me, I really just try to write the book that I would enjoy. Um, and I think that in doing that, I've found a way to appeal to, or at least I hope, but I mean, from what I've been told, um, I found a way to appeal to, you know, a large audience of people. Um, you know, I, I read and watch a really wide array of things. Um, and that's something even within like my family and like with my husband, you know, we all love like movies and books and storytelling and things. So I kind of, sometimes maybe like subconsciously pull from all of that and just, you know, I don't ever really sit down with the intention of writing a book that I'm like, oh, this is going to appeal to everybody. It's just kind of, you know, what story interests me, what excites me, what surprises me. And, um, you know, the character just so happens to be 17 years old and she, you know, it, it is more of a coming of age story. She's trying to find her place in the world and things like that. But I feel like, the, the sentiments behind a lot of, you know, her journey and what she goes through and, and even, you know, the adventure and the action and the excitement, you know, I feel like that can really, that relates to anybody and anybody can enjoy that. So. Yeah. Where do you, do you have a process for doing this of, as far as like, is it a time of day? People are always curious about that. Do you get up early and the sun's coming up and you're pounding the coffee? How does that work for RM Gray? So, yeah, for me, I, I really could write, I could write any time of day. I prefer to write first thing in the morning. I always tell people, I feel like nothing has really bogged me down yet when I first wake up. And I it really, I prefer to be up before anybody else is because it's kind of just, you know, this in-between time where everybody's still asleep and, and I can be alone with my thoughts. And, uh, you know, even if it's still dark outside, maybe the sun is rising or whatever. Um, I love to have coffee. Um, I have to have like some sort of hot drink, at least the coffee. I, I love tea, hot tea and stuff like that. Um, I actually have a candle that I light every time that I write. Um, it's something that my mom had got me years and years and years ago. Um, and she still buys me like new candles all the time. She'll always check in with me like, hey, do you have your candle? You know, and and I light that candle every time that I write. If I'm at home, I mean, obviously, if I'm somewhere else, I can't do that. But that's kind of my little ritual. I light that candle. I've got a hot drink. It's early in the morning. That's really I mean, that's the best. That's my best process. Yeah, I love it. And you, for people, um, you can get this for a song, Kindle, hardcover, paperback, however you like to absorb books and you get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble for sure. You have a beautiful cover. So describe that. How, how'd you come up with that or decide this is what I like? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the cover is something that I, what I always tell people is kind of funny. I, the way that I saw picking out the cover for my book was almost like when I picked out my wedding dress and I always told people, you know, I don't really know what I want, but I, I'll know it when I see it, you know? Um, and so I, I really gave my cover designer this very loose vision of, you know, I, I want it to be, you know, I want there to be blue. Um, you know, these are some of the, this is some of the imagery that's in the book. You know, there's a dagger with wings and, you know, there's these roses and, you know, it takes place at a manor, but it's also about pirates. It's kind of mysterious. And he sent me back, um, a, a rough sketch of what you see in the final cover. Um, 
And when he sent it back to me, I was like, that's it. Like that's 100%. I couldn't have thought that up any better. Um, it's just, it's a really fun cover. I I've always loved you when I was a kid, I love those like pictures where you have to find little details, you know, different things in the pictures. And I kind of feel like that's what the cover is. Cause every time you look at it, I feel like you see something you didn't see before. Um, and so that, that was just really cool. I mean, the moment he sent me that sketch, I was like, if that's a rough sketch, then, then the final product is going to be incredible. And, and a lot of people have really loved it. I love it. So yeah. Yeah, so we'll tell everyone, you need to go and get the book so you can go and see the cover too, but you've got a dragon, my favorites on it. You got a wild horse that is just incredible, a sword, a couple of cool skulls. It is where you do have these little Easter eggs that you can pull out of the cover. I love it. Absolutely, yeah, it's it's really neat. And it is wonderful to hear your enthusiasm. We can't wait to see what happens to you down the road. R.M. Gray, Nightweaver, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Visit us at www.greatwritersmedia.com. Email us at info at greatwritersmedia.com or call us at 877-556-0487.